Hey there! In this video I'm going to show you guys how to paint clouds. Come on with me and let's get creative. I'm Ashley Krieger. I am traveling and painting in all 50 states. Today I'm going to take you to Iowa to capture a beautiful cloudy sky. Let's get our paints out and get started. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up some blues. I've mixed up cerulean blue right here with my white and I'm using titanium white. I've got my cobalt blue here in the middle with my white and I have my ultramarine blue right here with my white. Okay, And then I have a blob of those colors over here on the side so I can mix and make them darker values as I see fit. I'm just going to add an, some white to my palette as well so I can go in between those colors. Now you want to have a big wash brush and it's um, about two inches. So the next thing that I did is I sketched out my composition and I used an acrylic marker for that but you can use a watercolor pencil or whatever. What I wanted to get down was the movement of the clouds and then what I wanted for the foreground. And in this painting, it's mostly going to be sky, and I'm just going to focus on teaching you guys how to paint the sky, and then I'll just put this in, and you guys can be creative with putting in your own land. So to make your painting or your paint slide on your canvas a little bit better, you can go ahead and you can add some of the water onto your canvas. Not a lot. You don't want it dripping, but just a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to start from the bottom because I want a specific amount of lightness down here to contrast with my land. So I'm gonna start there and then I'm gonna go up. And it's gonna cover these clouds, but I have in mind what I'm doing anyways, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so you'll notice that it's skipping. Okay, so it's skipping the, can it's like leaving the texture of the canvas. And that just means I need to add more water and more paint to my canvas. So right now I'm using the cerulean blue mixture. It's my lighter blue. And it's also a warmer blue, a brighter blue. Okay. Now I'm going to lighten it up a little bit more. Right. Now this is the blending part. And the blending just, it's about taking your time and just moving up on your canvas. Okay, now as I go up, I'm going to be adding a little bit more of that middle blue. Okay, this was the cobalt blue. And you can see that it's more on a purple side. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to merge those two colors together right here in the center and then just move up. And you can see my cloud marks underneath here because blue is a translucent color most of the time. These blues are anyways. And that's okay, because I'm just gonna cover it up with another layer. Okay, I just made it a little bit darker. So I'm adding a little bit of the darker side to it. Moving up on my canvas again. If you find yourself skipping or you can see the texture of your canvas. I call it skipping. Then you just add more water. Okay. Right, so through here, I just want to add a little bit more of my blue, my first blue, because I want that transition to be a little bit softer. See how that softens it up? This is how I'm going back and forth from side to side, and I'm not stopping in the middle. There's several ways to put in your clouds. I've done it where I've blocked in my shapes of my clouds. I've done it this way where um, I paint my sky first and then I put my, sky, my clouds over the top. There's so many different methods you can use. There's no right or wrong way to paint in your clouds. It's just one way to do it. Okay, now I'm gonna move on to my other blue. Okay, this was my ultramarine blue. And I'm just going to put that down and then I'll blend it in. I need a lot more on my brush. There we go. 
See how that really transitioned to like a sky and how a sky really looks. So this is kind of more on the realism side. You can make your sky on a bright day whatever color you want. But this just gives it that look. Okay, I'm going to go a little bit darker too as I go to the top here. Because this is mostly sky, it helps to have the different depths in the sky with the different blues. Okay, so I'm going to start getting a little bit darker right here on the top, pulling that color in. Okay, whatever streaks you see of your colors, you can either blend them out or you can leave them there for a look of clouds in the distance. Just depends on the look that you want in your sky. The more you blend, the softer it's going to look, the less streaks it's going to have. Okay, so you can kind of see that there's some steps in here of streaks and I can decide to either leave that or take them out. Okay, if I take them out, I usually um, take all the color off of my brush and get it down to where it's pretty dry. Okay, then I add just a little bit to the tip of my brush and then I just go across like this. Like I said though, you don't really have to do this step because in a cloudy sky, you're gonna have some streaking happening. Now the clouds are super fun to paint. This is where you can just really be creative and go with the flow, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna take some of my white and add it to this blue up here, okay? But I want it to be lighter than what I have down. Oops, sorry, I just got, there's these little ants around here that like to eat me, okay? So it's going to be a lighter value but it's still going to be kind of hazy back here, okay? And I'm just going across right here because these clouds are so easy. You just have to pull these clouds across and build them up however you wish. And that's really all you have to do with your brush. And I'm just using a flat brush. And at this point, it's this simple to get the look of clouds right here on this bottom. Okay, as you go up, things get a little bit more complicated, okay? So you start to build up on your, your clouds, okay? And I take my blue and I add a little bit more to my white, okay? Because there's going to be a little bit more of dimension in these. So we're gonna have a darker blue with a lighter white. So I'll just come in here and add that blue and then when I'm ready, I'll come in and add the light on top. See how that works? Now, if your clouds, when you look out on them, have a little bit of gray in them, you can just take a little bit of your red or your orange, add it to your blue to make that gray. It gives it that um, way of like harmonizing with the rest of your painting, okay? So I'm using my orange from my palette that I'm going to be using in the rest of my painting. And I made that gray right there, okay? And so if I put that in, I just wanna make sure it's a light enough value that it doesn't stand out too much. Part of this, when I showed you my sketch, it was moving up and it moves up like this. So I start creating that, you know, still pretty straight on the bottom but it's gonna start moving to this direction, okay? Now, if you want those soft lines on your canvas, like you find that this hard edge is just bothering you, it's not letting you get down what you want, okay? I use a swirling motion with my brush, but you can go down to like a smaller filbert brush that has the round. I don't, have one of those right now right in front of me 
But let me show you how that works for like a bigger cloud up here. So I'm moving into my blue that's in the middle and adding white to that. Okay, so there's a bigger cloud right in here. And you see how with that movement it just, I want to make sure I'm not skipping, but it just softens that line and there's no hard edge because there's no hard edge here. So filbert brushes are really good for clouds. I like to use just a small amount of brushes and I have my favorite brushes. And as you grow as an artist, you kind of develop that, like you just have ones you always go to. And this is one of them. And I've just learned to work with it in a way that I like. So come in here, check my value and add in these shapes, okay? So I'm following the shapes that I've already created, all right? I do recommend that you either do that yourself or you look at a reference photo and you can find my reference photos for all my paintings um, by becoming a patron. I think the link is right there so you can go ahead and do that. I like to do it little bits by little bit with a smaller brush. Some people just like to take a big brush and go you know. Um, but I find that it gives that texture of clouds when I do it this way that I like. So it's just my process. Everybody's process is a little bit different. Clouds are all about layering and adding in colors because the colors are bouncing off these clouds even though they appear white there is warm and cool playing up in those clouds. So right now, I'm actually putting down the clouds that we can't see behind. But we'll get to a point where like, we want some clouds that we can see the sky behind, okay? And when I do that, I take off all the paint on my brush, all the wetness on my brush, okay? Kinda let my brush get a little crazy on the ends. Grab my white, okay, and this is called dry brushing. And I just take a little bit of my white and then you can see that when I spread it around and there's not as much white, you can see behind that cloud, okay? And that happens realistically. Okay, so now when I'm getting up here, I'm gonna get whiter, okay? And then I'll come in over with the gray, but I'm also gonna get really specific in my shapes. Very um, loose with my shapes. I don't need them to be going across. I don't need them to um, look uniform. I don't want it to just be like, woo, here's a little cloud that's like on a cartoon. I'm looking at the clouds up in the sky, I'm looking at a reference photo, and I'm following that shape. So I'm looking at the distance between things. Okay looking at my lines actually behind here because I've made it easy for myself. <laughs> okay, I leave some holes for the sky to be coming through. I take off some of my paint and I let it be translucent in some areas. And feathery. Okay. the clouds trail off from each other. Okay, and then when I need it to round off and not look translucent, I come in here with a little more paint, a little more water on my brush. Okay, now here we get to the layering part. We're gonna grab that gray. Okay, cool it down with my blue and I have it right here in this middle blue still okay and I'm coming here and I'm adding the shadow now the Sun's hitting this cloud somewhere up here okay because we're not having the Sun in this painting it's hitting this cloud and there's gonna be shadows where the Sun's not hitting Whew. that was a big bug <laughs> Did you see that <laughs> some weird bugs around here and then I have ants crawling up me biting me Okay, so 
if I want to take my blue to more gray purple, then I just add red to it instead of the orange. So some of the things I like to do at the end when I put in my shadow is just to make sure if the contrast is too strong or if it works, because what I can do is I can just take my white and add some water to it and to soften the contrast I will just glaze over it so what I'm doing right now is making a really watery white and coming in here and softening those lines okay so see how that's making that cloud look a little more realistic okay I'm gonna back away a little bit because I'm kind of in an awkward angle and I'm gonna put in the rest of these clouds for some reason, my camera keeps turning off. But I'm adding it some areas and see how that's making it pop. Okay. And I can always add gray back in. Like if I feel like this needed some more gray or it was too strong. This is kind of the last step. Of the clouds so it all kind of comes down to measuring out the amount of value you want but you'll notice that I kind of started with that mixed blue with my white who's not the lightest value this is the lightest value that I'm adding right now okay, and this is a great time to add like any color if you wanted to add maybe like light yellow or you want like a pink tint in your clouds it's a great time to do that okay and some people like to blend with their finger like say this is too strong you can blend this with your finger like this and it just gives it a more smooth um, texture just dip it in my water and your blues shouldn't be toxic or anything you can check your paints this is actually one of my favorite things to do, this finger paint and soften my skies. I think skies are one of my favorite things to paint. Sunsets, clouds. I love trees and landscapes too. You shouldn't have very much value change in these clouds down here, so if you find like it, there's too much, Especially more than what's up here. That's wrong. It's not how it looks in real life. So if you're going for the look for real life, you kind of have to tone those down. I'm just going to use my finger again. And then just step away from your painting every once in a while and see if it's coming together the way you like it. See if there's any like hard edges you want to soften. So like I find this spot right here to be pretty distracting just because it's like this long string right here. So I'm gonna come in here just with my finger again. Might as well stick with my finger while I'm here and just give it a little bit more of a shape. Because sometimes like weird shapes can um, really become the focus. And if you don't want them to be the focus, then you have to take them and change them. And while I'm doing this, you may feel like, oh, I wish you would have kept that or whatever. That's just, you know, personal preference. You'll find things that you may want to put back in your painting when you come back to it, too. Like, everybody has a different eye for what they, they like. Okay, and then this one needs a lot more dimension. 
going in there. And I hope this is giving you a really good idea on how to paint clouds because I struggled with clouds when I first started painting which was a long time ago. <laughs> Back now I'm kind of getting older. But I remember when clouds were hard for me, where skies were hard for me. So it just takes some practice and then over the years you'll find that if you practice at something long enough, and maybe it won't even take you years, that you'll get a good idea of what you can do, what you're capable of. Everything just takes practice. I wish I could show you some of my skies that I painted a long time ago, but while I'm traveling, they're all in storage. If you've learned something from this, hit that subscribe button. Come back. Every Sunday there's a new video. And just keep learning. Keep watching. Even if you don't paint. You're watching and learning as you as you watch. But I hope I inspire you to get out your own paints and try. You just do that on your own time when you feel comfortable. And you can follow along with me. You might be hearing those kids in the background playing. Those are mine. They're out there swimming. Now, the next thing that I would probably do is just paint the rest of my painting and then come in here and as I feel necessary how things are going down here I would just make a few changes probably maybe I won't decide to change anything but this is pretty good I feel confident that this looks like a beautiful cloudy sky and if you feel like there's anything you want to stand out a little bit more add your white if you feel like there needs to be some more contrast in your clouds like more depth then add some gray in where the sun wouldn't be hitting and that's all you need to do thank you so much for watching i hope that you learned something from this tutorial if you have any questions let me know in the comments below also i want to give a shout out to my grateful art members who help make my videos possible you too can become a member you can just click right over here and you also get weekly art lessons i also have a couple other beginner tutorials for clouds so you can check those out right over here and I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.